um, there was a verse last week that really spoke to me and I thought it's such a beautiful verse and then I was so happy to hear it being quoted again on Sabbath by one of our sisters. Um, so it is Psalm 68 verse 18 which says that um, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. And I thought what a beautiful verse. Can you just see the picture? The Lord loading us. It doesn't just give us a little bit, but he loads us with everything that we need. He really is a good God, the God of our salvation, and he's worthy of all the praise that we could ever give to him. So we have um, come once again to continue the series called Standing in the Gap. Basically, interceding for others, interceding for those who need it most. And it's such a privilege to pray for others. And I'm so heartened to be part of this experience where we bring our friends and our loved ones to the Lord and ask him to intercede in their behalf. So we are so thankful for this series. And this morning, we also have a very special speaker once again, Sister Tswani Mutoli. She has been speaking about on the theme, Virtuous Women. She has blessed us tremendously. God has used her. And I know that God will bless us once again through her this morning. So Sister Tswani, thank you for um, coming here and allowing God to use you mightily and We'd like to invite you to go ahead soon. Before I ask you to begin, I also would like to invite and welcome our new members. Thank you for joining us, and we trust you'll have a blessed time together with us. So, Sister Tuani, please go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, Sister Belinda. Good morning, Saints. Um, and thank you morning, for that warm word. Uh, we glorify the Lord always for waking us up and giving us yet another opportunity to experience him, to get to know him better. Um, this morning we share together saints in the, in the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, um, we were, yes, last week we were sharing um, the book of Proverbs and today we continue with the words of the wise under the book of Ecclesiastes. And we read together the chapter, uh, which is chapter 11, um, verse six, and it reads, in the morning, sow thy seed. And in the evening, withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. The focus is on, in the morning, sow thy seeds. And in the evening, withhold not thy hand. Can we pray? Our Father and our God, you who are the only just true and holy God, we bow down before you, Father, and say, holy, holy, holy. We ask that, Lord, may you water down your Holy Spirit upon us. We know that, Lord, your word says that when your, the rains come down and the snows melt, they do not return back to you. But what happens is that they go out and they nourish the seed so that they can be seed for the sower and bread for the one who needs. And therefore, your word, when it goes out, does not return to your void, but it accomplishes that, Father, which you have proposed. We pray that, Lord, may this word be accomplished in us, the purpose that you have ordained in us, in our circumstances, in the situations where we are standing in the gap. We ask that when all is said and done, honor and glory goes to your name. Allow us, Father, to ride on your wings. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Um, you know, there's, there's this word that says, in the morning, sow thy seeds. It's a reminder for us to sow because at times as we walk through the journeys of life, as we are gardeners of life, um, things happen at times that distract our attention. I am a keen gardener and on Friday, as I was doing the garden, I was reflecting on what is the deeper meaning of doing the garden? What is the deeper meaning of tending um, after a garden? What is the deeper meaning of, of sowing beyond just producing food, beyond uh, maybe uh, appreciating the beauty that nature has? 
And, and as I pondered on the many packets of seeds, because seed spring is coming, and if you want to, to sow certain seeds, you must actually sow them in the right time. I was wondering, um, what, what, what is this? And it hit me that in life, in the day-to-day -day things of life, Jesus has deposited for us life-giving lessons. He has deposited life-giving lessons. And one of those life-giving lessons that he gives us is about the seed. You see, from the beginning, God created us as productive sowers that bring forth good fruit. And so the title of our message is, Whilst There Is Still Time, Sow. Whilst There Is Still Time, Sow. You see, Jesus from whom all good seeds come, and um, you know, he, he sowed himself into our lives. He, he is the seed of all seeds. Um, he had the seed, it was the, the seed that had life in itself, through whom everything was made. You know, in the book of, 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 of Matthew, in the book of John, in all the gospels, we hear about Christ being the foundation upon whom all things were created. So this seed allowed himself um, to be the example of, of what we should do when we say we need to sow. He led a way for his disciples and he allowed the seed of his body to be buried to the ground, to experience darkness for us and with us, even though there was no darkness with him. He overcame darkness, the process of the death of a seed, so that when we find ourselves and allow loved ones and those we care about, when we find us and, and all of the people we love, you know, under such situation that, that we, may, we may be able to say, Lord, as you gave yourself up as a seed, so I do not by my own strength, but by you. When we feel as though our efforts are buried underground, when we feel engulfed by death itself, we can have the assurance through looking at Jesus that we have a God who is acquainted with our situations. He is with us even there. Jesus was resurrected to give us a sure guarantee of the victory of seed sown in faith. You see, when the Lord gives us a word and says, sow in the morning, the process of sowing is, is, is not um, an easy process. You can choose to be doing other things. This, this morning, you can choose to be sleeping. But you have woken up and you are sowing the seed of time. You are, you are sowing the seed of prayer. You are sowing the seed of standing in the gap. And so Jesus, through his resurrection, says, whenever you take anything that's in your hand, and whenever you give it back and you say, Lord, I surrender it to you, out of it will be a resurrection. There is nothing that we give to the Lord. There is no seed that we put in the ground that will not be resurrected if it is watered by the Holy Spirit. There is nothing that is put in the ground that will not spring up if the sign of righteousness is upon it. And so this morning, I pray that the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings on our behalf. I pray that the Holy Spirit will be poured upon dry situations, dry ground where seed has been plowed, maybe for years. And you said, but Lord, this one thing, this one seed, Lord, I have put on the ground, but I'm not seeing anything. You see, the resurrection says Jesus rose up as a marvelous tree of life, under whom we, we sit and find shelter, under whom we draw our provision, from whom we draw our seed, our unshakable cedar, our shelter, our strong tower, our hiding place. And, and in that way, it's an assurance that when we surrender, the seed that God has given in our hand, the Lord will allow us to blossom as the, seed, as, as the tree that others can come under the shelter to find refuge, that others can come from the tree and, and be able to pluck the fruit that is evident in us. It is from Jesus Christ, the seed of the seeds, that all, seed derives, all seeds derive purpose. He is the one who has made and who has made the life-giving seed after its kind, away from his DNA, away from Jesus, 
we would have a spiritual and barrenness. We will experience fruitless, fruitlessness and see salvation in our lives. In my reflection, it came to mind that there are millions upon millions of precious seeds in different shapes and sizes. Some of them are small, you can barely touch like the mustard seed, and yet others are big, they're flamboyant like the avo seed, like the mango seeds. Some trees, some seeds produce trees, other seeds produce grains, others herbs, others fruit and vegetable, all created to be fruitful in diverse ways. In the same way, the Lord this morning reminds us as women of virtue, as men of virtue, that he has created each of us with unique seeds of time, unique seeds of personality, unique seeds of talent, of gifts and treasures, unique seeds of networks. You see, the people that he has put in our path around us, he has put together as our seed to suit our different circumstances, to suit our locations, to suit our seasons and our purposes. To Jeremiah, he says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nation. You see, the prophet Jeremiah was anointed a prophet before he even knew it. And so with each of us, before we even knew it, God has deposited, had deposited a seed that cannot be compared to any other. My seed is unique. Your seed is unique. He has placed us in the right locations, in the right places, in the right circumstances, in the right family, in the right church, in the right community where that seed is needed. He has not put you in a place where you're not, you not needed. When the Lord designed us, he knew for such a time as this that this seed was going to be on hand. And in this time, it must be planted. You see, in a world that is about trends, conformity, fitting in and blending in, the message today for women and men alike is that your real power and virtue lies not in conformity, in trying to be like this seed and that seed, you are created with individuality, power to think and to be. May we come to a place where we no longer wish to be the seed or that seed, or to be like this person and that person. And it is not the a precious, most productive use of precious time. You see, many look to the garden next door. Listen to the amazing testimonies of success by Sister X and Sister Y, not realizing that even their best efforts will fall short because they are not created with the makeup and the seed that Sister X has. Women and men of amazing potential and talent linger in the depths of self-doubt, feelings of inadequacy because they spend time chasing other people's dreams. Whether it is dreams of parents, dreams of friends, family, peers, or fellow church members, measuring the quality of seed in your hand by the measure set by another will always leave you feeling like you fall short. Measuring the value and quality of gifts of our kids, of our wives, our husbands, by the standards set by, set by other families and kids will leave a trail of disappointment, disgruntlement, and pain. You see, the best authentic version of the virtuous woman is not even the woman of Proverbs 31. Her qualities of diligence, being industrious, her creativity, her faithfulness, her loyalty, her giving, her caring, her attitude of not grumbling, grumbling about her responsibilities, they serve as a model for us. But we must also realize that as a woman with businesses, a woman with servants and a husband who sat at the city gate. She had a different profile. The seed in her hand and her context was different from yours. May we learn and pray that Lord help me to be uniquely me. And that may, I may not seek to be somebody's cat, copycat. It is in allowing that, that uh, the, the uniqueness of the seed in us that real beauty and your uniqueness is expressed. You see, somebody may say, but if I look at myself, I look small. I feel small. Because when I look at the greatness of others, who am I? What am I? But remember that do not despise the day 
of little beginnings. Do you not despise the little mustard seed in you because little is much when God is in it. It is said, it is said insignificant does not mean powerless. God wants you to use the natural seed he gave us for his glory. You see, there's a, there's a need for women to sow the seed of love. The, the seed of selfless, selflessness. The seed of seeing a need and saying, but Lord, I am going to take of that you've given me and surrender. There is a need for us to sow the seed of forgiveness. You see, at times we, we have the feeling that when somebody has aggrieved us and they've caused us pain, that within us, in holding on to this pain, there's that sense of self-justification. But when you sow seed, at times it means letting go of something that you may feel precious to you, you may feel defends you. And so we need, as women, to sow those seeds of forgiveness, to sow the, the seeds of peace. Instead of going and proving ourselves right, proving ourselves called, just be there in the mission and just give. No matter how light or, light or frivolous or fragile the seed may seem, it is not light, frivolous or fragile to God. And, um, you know, where may we be as, as women in the habit and in the discipline of cooperating with the rules of nature and seek the will of the Father? as we sow our seed. Jesus says, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed, but if it dies, it produces many seeds. It is actually amazing that sowing is the way to multiplication and not subtraction. You see, many times when, when we have to give, it feels as though, oh, Lord, I have given so much energy. I have nothing more to give. And yes, there's that place where, where we pause, but there is nothing that we have ever given to the Lord. We have, there hasn't been anybody who's given energies to the Lord that has not received them back. So I pray that that which you have given, whether over the years when you've served your family, you've served your children, and you look and you wonder, Lord, what happened to the seed? Why? Why am I not seeing the plant? I pray that you may stand in the assurance that Christ says, so. And in good season, you will reap the word, the reward. Sowing is not without risks or challenges. Weeds and pests are, are, are already are ready to go at new shoots as soon as they are out. You see, there are weeds in the garden, even amongst the seeds and plant, plants in, 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 in God's garden. They enjoy the same sun. They consume the same nutrients, but they are like a fly in the ointment, busy in churches, offering prayers, yet constant accusers of brothers and sisters. Peddling lies, malicious gossip, corruption, immorality, and, and, and just unprincipled living, crying out the saints. But it says that, um, you know, let us not be discouraged, but fight the weeds of discouragement with the word. At times we ask ourselves the question, you know, where, where, what happened to the seed? Today we are praying that Lord, may, may we water the seed with prayer, that these seeds that were planted in the past may come to life. Today, we sow, we sow new seeds of faith and trust in God. We are here to lift up the son of righteousness that he may arise over the planted seed with healing in the wings. I'm praying, I would like us to pray for families in a special way because there is no place where we sow like in the family. And at times we may have sown, sown weeds when we thought we were sowing good seed. I pray that the Lord may, may uproot those seeds. If there are any seeds in our lives that, that are negative, may the Lord help us to uplift them. And may the Lord, in the, with, with the good seed that he's given each of us, may he give us today an opportunity to say, Lord, I'm starting again. When you know of people who are struggling, whose seed has been corrupted, today we stand in the gap and say, Lord, that seed that has been corrupted, we ask that, Father, may you bring newness. Don't let the battle fatigue weary you of doing good and steal your harvest. Sister, you've worked hard, and at times it feels that up to so far and no more. But remember, in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Whatever happens, don't forsake the garden. Don't forsake the field. 
whatever the situation, keep sowing anyway because he is faithful that promised. I pray that instead of thorns when you have sowed, instead of thorns coming up, I pray that after you've sowed, that a fir tree will come up. I pray that instead of a briar, thorns and thistles, that a beautiful tree will come up and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off and that the world and the nations will see and say, indeed, this is the seed of the Lord and blessed be the name of the Lord. This is my prayer in Christ Jesus. I'm thanking and handing over to you, Sister Belinda. Amen and amen. Amen. What a beautiful message. Um, Sister, will you please pray for us? Before you leave, please pray for us. Um, Sister Belinda, mm -hmm. our Father and our God, we worship you. I ask, Father, for your Holy Spirit. I, I ask for the downpouring of your Holy Spirit on the seeds that are listening to this message. Many feel their seed is small. They feel, they feel that their efforts are not much. At times they feel that despite their best efforts, Lord, they still fall short. I pray that you who are the giver of the seed, we know that what you've given us is precious. I ask that Father water down on the soil. I pray that your children may be a fruitful bow to you. That Lord, when all is said and done, we may glorify you and say, indeed, he is faithful with that promise. I pray that their seeds will last beyond, but that their seed will be seeds of legacy for their children and children's children after them. In Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. What a beautiful, timely message. Friends, may we sow in faith.